Welcome to phase one of our shop build. We are making some progress out here today. It seems like it at least. We've been out here for a few hours doing some work already. Eric has single-handedly got this whole driveway. We have a U-shaped driveway prepped and he has the whole pad prepared. It took a few days with the Branson, but that machine is awesome. My only complaint is that it doesn't have a twin. So this is all ready to go. We've got our blueprints. We've been studying those. We've got our math table. It's been a lot of work to get to this point. We were kind of back and forth taking turns on the tractor, getting all this gravel brought in, getting all this area prepared. And I'm going to have Eric show you guys some of the other things we have going on out here. This is the pit we're calling it. So we've been working on this for the last few projects and the ground here is pretty much just gravel you just have to dig down to get it so we've pulled just like countless numbers of yards out of this hole and i think we're like i don't know maybe like eight feet deep that's at least eight feet deep right yeah maybe more and it works out really well for us because we needed the gravel and this gravel is kind of like uh sandy gravel so really nice there is some big ones you find in there like this but it's been working out awesome for us let's go check out the building pad it's really deep once you get in here. One more thing I wanted to show you on the way over there that I thought that was pretty cool. I found this on the property and I think it was some sort of like drag for the driveway maybe, but that's what we're using it for. And I've been dragging our new little drive we put in. I dragged the regular driveway that's here and I dragged some of the pad and it is like this extremely heavy. I mean, this whole thing weighs like a few hundred pounds. It's angle iron, real thick. And then it's got like this blade off like a grater or a tractor that weighs like an extra 100 pounds on top. So I've just been dropping it with the forks and dragging it around and everything's nice and smooth. Here it is, welcome to the job site or the building site. And this is where the Quonset Hut shop is gonna go. We're gonna do a concrete foundation with foam insulation underneath. And this spot we actually picked out a long time ago, like in the winter, when we first came out here, we found this area, there weren't a lot of trees and it was like a perfect opening. We staked it out. It's pretty much in the exact same spot. I think we just pushed it back a little bit. So we cut it into this kind of a hill we have here. And I had a little bit of an issue doing that for some reason, I dug like deeper on that back side. So Errol and I spent a lot of time on the tractor uh, bringing gravel over here. I think this whole pad cutting it in and bringing the gravel in and smoothing it out We put a little over 16 hours on the tractor So quite a bit of work on it and the shop So we've got these blueprints and they are intimidating. So you really got to study these things There's things on here like what does this mean? You know WWR tie bars stirrup There's all kinds of crazy things on here But we've learned it pretty good and we kind of know what we're doing. So the shop itself is going to be 36 feet and six inches wide. And then the length of it is going to be 63 feet, eight inches. So that's just the shop. Our foundation that we're gonna put down or our cement slab is completely different. So let me show you what we have going on here. We basically have the perimeter of almost the outside of the slab. This is gonna actually be where the outside of the foam insulation is gonna be. So that's two inches and then concrete will start. And why we have this measured off right here, this is going to be a footer. So we're gonna dig this down 12 inches, and then we're gonna have a six inch form that comes up with six more inches of concrete. That's gonna give us an 18 inch footer. The footer on this side is gonna be a little bit different. Quonset huts are pretty unique where they almost have like a lot of like outward pressure going down on them. So this footer, we have it marked at 22 inches. So that's two inches of foam and it's gonna be a 20 inch footer. And then this one's actually gonna angle up into the slab. So this footer and the one on the other side are gonna take up a lot of concrete. They're gonna be pretty big. And the way we're gonna pour this slab is we're gonna do it the footers and the slab at the same time. So we're gonna pour it all at once. I talked about the footers, those are 18 inches deep and the slab itself is gonna be about six inches thick. And then we got the center marked off over here. We're still kind of deciding the exact layout of the shop, but we figured where would be a better spot to put a drain than the exact center. So we have a couple ideas for a drain we're gonna build. That's gonna go there. A lot of this work we're gonna do now is like excavation work. So we're gonna bring the tractor in here. We're gonna dig out the footers, dig out the drain. We're gonna dig out some piping for like later plumbing down the road. A lot of work and a lot of steps. We hope today to get the footers dug in, maybe get the drain dug in and whatever else we can get done. Let's uh, grab our can of paint. We're gonna mark out our lines and then we'll get rid of all this string and we could start digging. Make sure you're hitting the string. 
Okay, I'm not that good at this. These things work pretty good. They are called inverted marking paint. So usually when you spray paint, you go like that. These you do upside down. It's got a different nozzle on there and they're meant for marking on the ground. It says up to 800 lanier feet per can. I don't think we did that much, but we're almost there. Let me get that back one again. That took so long to put, hours to put in and like 10 seconds to take apart, huh? flying through that work over there I think we both didn't know exactly how long it was gonna take him but he's had a good amount of practice with the arm and we're thankful for the dirt being a little bit softer it's really compacted and gravelly and hard but it's also capable with the machine to, to dig it up so I'm glad it's going going well for him I think that we're gonna be done with that he'll be done with that in probably two hours or so I figured this would be a great time to show you our chicks, our baby chicks that are doing well. They hatched out a little earlier this week and they're in there with their moms and I just think it's like the cutest thing in the world. So we're gonna head in there. You can probably tell why I think it is cuteness overload in here. We've got four moms with all their babies. I think we have 37, we may have 36. We've got a lot of gray colored babies and even like darker colored ones. So a little bit different than what we're used to. Even the moms themselves are getting a little confused as to who belongs to who. It's awesome, this coop is pretty big because it's giving the moms a lot of space to do their thing, to talk to the chicks. They, they feed them, we blend up their food. Um, we feed them whole grain, so I, I blend it up for them, make it a little bit small during this period of their life. We just make sure they have fresh water and they pretty much do their own thing in here. They will bring the babies out when they're ready. Usually they would have brought them out by this point, but they seem to be pretty content in here. So I'm just gonna leave them be.
gonna be like that, so it's not as tall as you think. I say I do the best I can do by hand, like this, like that, and then we just call it good. We get this down to 12. I would rake it. I would do your edge first and scrape everything in that you need, and I would rake it and take a couple measurements because when you tamp it, it's gonna go down about an inch. Good thing. The corners got a little wide, huh? Yeah. Are you going to come through with the tractor and level this off? Well, I spoke too soon earlier. This uh, took a lot more energy than I anticipated. We learned that we took too much out of these trenches and we had to spend a lot of our time backfilling it. Eric was able to do some of it with the tractor, but we had to do a lot of it by hand. And then we tamped everything down. So um, on the positive side, this whole, it's almost from finished the perimeter, but we know the exact measurement. It's almost perfectly 12 inches the whole way which is awesome right to here. The sides where the like the load bearing walls are supposed to have this angle right here, kind of like a peg is the best way I could describe it. And I tried to kind of angle it, but the way our soil is, it's gravel, it just crumbles. So I couldn't really get much of an angle. So that's just gonna have to do, we're following the guidelines and what they're recommending, but we're just gonna have to work with what we have too. And I think this is definitely gonna be solid enough. Our ground here is just super compacted and hard. Um, we're both, we're both exhausted the mosquitoes have been out and i think it's close to 10 p.m but i know eric wants to get our drain finished up tonight so he's gonna work on getting that buried well we're in the exact center of the shop that's where the drains go in and this is kind of like a catch basin but it has holes drilled in the bottom of it so when the shop's done this little uh blue lid is going to come off and we have a metal crate that's going to go over here and anytime you have like a vehicle in here and there's snow on it and it melts or there's water or whatever. You get water on the ground. It's going to go down the drain and it's going to drain through the holes in the bottom of the barrel. We have extremely well draining soil here. It's like not even soil. It's just like sand and gravel. So that's a 55 gallon drum. We got it about where we need it. We have to take into account that we're going to have foam insulation and then we're going to have concrete. But I think I got exactly where we need it. We got it level. Let's bury this thing and we're going to call her a night. Itchy, huh? Yeah, they're pretty bad tonight. <laughs> to the shop we're not going to have like a traditional um tie into a septic system we have a septic here but this is really far away yeah and we don't actually need one so this is this is what we got going on <laughs> yeah so this is a little bit different from the like the storm water not the storm water but like the catch, basin. the catch basin for the melt water from a vehicle or something this will actually be if we ever want to put a sink in here like a utility sink maybe we can have like a little uh, on-demand water heater right washing there hands. yeah washing hands cleaning up canning or whatever so what we're gonna do is prepare for that we have two inch drain pipe and we're gonna go down about five feet five to six feet and we're gonna go underneath the footer and we're gonna pop up on that other side and that's just kind of how this is gonna end for now and then later on in the future we'll know where this pipe is because it's gonna be sticking out of the ground and we can dig down and we can finish the drain for it the plan is not to get the water hooked up right now we don't even know if we'll exactly how we're going to go about doing that but we're just kind of thinking ahead since the concrete is going to be poured this summer and i would really like some cold water at least out here for when we're doing like it's going to be a workshop so we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff out here and i think that five six feet should be deep enough right yeah and then what we'll do is when we go to dig that drain we'll try to dig it even deeper at a downward slope so hopefully we don't have any freezing in there and then what we're also going to do is prepare for if we want to actually run water from our cabin where the well is out here so we have uh 
plastic conduit and this is one inch so you could fit half inch PEX through this. So we're gonna put one of these in here and then we're gonna put another one. And uh, the other one's just gonna be kind of a spare in case we need to use it. Like oh, this. that's an elbow. This is an elbow. That'll go down there like that. And then we'll cut this off like a foot, oh, okay. a foot above. We'll Some... cut that one off a foot above. Sometimes I've seen people have elbows for some reason sticking out of the concrete. That's usually where like our in... PEX is gonna go. Our... All you do with our PEX is you just run an elbow with like a little piece like that. And then it just ends. It just goes into the thing. But let's get that one cut. Twist it in there and get it, and then get it straight with this one. Oh, this is gonna be cool, hun. These little things are so cool. Try to get rid of them. Are they gonna touch or separated? Or separated? We're gonna have to separate all of them. Oh shoot! Snapped it. Leatherman's too powerful. Let's bury it. That turned out pretty good. After having this huge, ugly ditch, we filled it back in and it looks like we never dug anything. Whew, we got these capped off for now. We gotta put the caps on that side. We don't want any dirt or anything going in there. And next, we're gonna work on the drain again. We're gonna get this whole inside area kind of re-leveled, get rid of some of the huge rocks, and then we'll finish digging the footer. And then at that point, the tractor is going out of the, uh, the inside square, the inner circle. Why was the ditch ugly? The circle of trust is what I was going for there. The circle. The truck. The tractor is out of. No, I'm just saying it was like a big. I thought it was very inviting. Like you wanted to go down into it and hang out there for a while. take this look at like just like that is what we need see that so we can also lower this one because we know that's where it needs to be our footers are completely finalized so this is how they're going to be they're all tamped down and they're looking pretty good they're looking straight so what we're doing now is we got our string back out and we had to find the exact corners again and if you can see right here that is one of our exact corners so we're at 38 and three quarters of an inch wide, 64 feet and a half an inch long. And from corner to corner, we're exactly at 74 feet, six inches. So we're perfectly square. And what we've done now is because we are using two by sixes at our forms, they're gonna kind of sit up here and then we're gonna have foam go down in the trench. We're gonna talk about that later, but we found exactly the height that we, that we need all of our forms to be. So we're gonna take our laser level and we're gonna set it right here at the top of this string where the corners are. And we're gonna get that measurement exactly where it is level. And then we're gonna go to all three corners and we're gonna adjust the string and height, get it to that same exact level. Then we start putting in these forms. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna figure it out. And then we'll yeah, know. You know what I could do to help you? I could put my finger. What if you put that two by six in? That's what I was gonna say, something firm. Or get it so it's right. At so it doesn't though, displace it, it but yeah. it just... Thank you. Just like a... Not even a hair down. Up? Down? down. Just not even a hair though, just... Okay. Really hard to do. They want to just keep crumbling 
the edge, you know what I mean? It's touching right there and it's touching right here. I think that's just it's a little low. Why are you being mean to me? Oh, not being mean. You're not supposed to have screws in your mouth, I'm then. Two inches. The string like does not want to come up. Things are going pretty good. We have a nice system down. The first one we put in was kind of hard to figure out how we were going to do it, but we've got it under control now. Fortunately, after getting about a little over the quarter of the way done. I realized that we had a big problem. So we wouldn't have a problem if we weren't putting foam in the middle right here. So the grade here is the same height as the grade on the outside of those forms. So if we put two inches of foam in here and then uh, we put like our wire mesh and our PEX tubing, we're not gonna have enough concrete on top. So for the two inch foam here, we're only gonna end up with a three and a half inch concrete pad and we were shooting for like five and a half, six inches. So. We need to compensate for that. And what I just did is I went around the string around the whole pad and I marked up two inches and we're raising up the string two inches. Kind of a bummer. Unfortunately, we need to take out these forms or at least adjust them. So we're gonna try to raise them up two inches to meet the new height. And uh, it looks like we're gonna have to backfill some into our footer. We don't wanna use too much concrete in those footers. The concrete's expensive. So we're aiming for 18 inches in there. Right now we're at 20. Let's see how hard it is to raise these things up. I'm losing steam. <laughs> You need a steam. lot more. <laughs> I want to use this little nubby guy somewhere. Maybe use him right here. You don't know. We haven't even used 20 of those. Yeah. Really A lot of hard work out here. We're making progress now that we fixed the deficiency from earlier. So we've got about half more to do. And what we're just doing on this back side, or I guess sidewall, is we don't quite have enough since we had to raise the forms up two inches. Seems like we just don't have enough dirt kind of underneath the forms right now. So we're gonna fix that in a little bit, but we have a system that we're doing. It seems to work really well. Eric is utilizing older wood that we had from when we did the sawmill pour and he's splicing the pieces together. And then he's using these other like perpendicular pieces of wood to kind of stake into the ground. And we're getting like a real secure form that way, rather than having to put those concrete stakes right up against the form. Some of them even need uh, double stakes, but everything seems really secure and straight. So I think we're both really happy. We hope to have the whole thing done by tonight. We'll see how that goes because it's, all, it's already the evening hours. And uh, I mean, we have daylight on our side, so we should, we should be able to get it done. Let's hope. Anything possible with the Alaskan sun. I need some water. That's our shovel. Well. Wow, look at that neck. Looks nice, hon. This is cause for a celebration. So we've got some, I guess it's like a coffee milkshake that Arrow pulled out of the freezer for us. So we're enjoying these. And the perimeter forms are in. I don't think they're 100% done. Probably gonna go around and do a little more support, but they are like just perfect to a T with these strings. They're so straight. I didn't think we were gonna get it done. We worked into the evening, so it's late in the evening now. The mosquitoes are getting us and we learned a lot with this one. So we started off bracing it with like two by fours around here. And as we worked our way around, we kind of ran out of two by fours. And then we started using two by sixes and two by eights, which are way better than the two by fours because you can put two screws in the little stakes instead of just one. Ran into a couple issues, but we have enough wood. We had enough stakes. We had enough screws. All in all, this turned out absolutely awesome today. We're going to come out here again tomorrow. We're going to get right back on it. Did you hear the cat? Walk the line. Okay. 
Okay, we have gathered our strength. At least what I think, and we're back out here. Just when I think these footers are done, there is more work to do to them. So now that we have our heads on straight, we put some stakes in the middle of our forms. The line that we were using to gauge the forms was a pretty big span. And I think we realized last night that it was sagging a little bit in the middle. So there's now a stake in the middle, helping us keep straight. Our forms are really heavy. And because the bucket dug kind of like a wide trench, especially on the end wall side, there's no actual dirt for the forms to rest on. So they're super heavy. And Eric ran to go get some more stakes because we definitely are gonna need them. We wanna get everything really well staked in at this point, prepare for the concrete, even though it's a while away, we wanna make sure that the weight isn't going to push too much against the forms. We learned that from the last project that we worked on. We actually learned a lot from that experience, especially about running too short on concrete. And I think that's all helping us out here. You know, we like to share our trials and tribulations. So the footers are just a really important part of this. They're crucial and we've gotta get it right. What I'm doing right now is just going along the form down the bottom, there's some dirt. This particular side, and the other side, mainly this side, the dirt extended in a little bit. So the measurement was just off a hair when Eric was trenching. So I'm just going along now and I'm getting rid of that, re-leveling it getting it anywhere between 16 and 18 inches from the bottom of the footer to the top of the concrete form. And now we're gonna be able to put our insulation or our foam just right snug up along this edge and backfill things. That's the goal today every day i'm not really sure what we're going to get accomplished we both are just exhausted today and i'm pretty sure it's going to be upper 70s it's blazing right now we picked the hottest time of the day to do this work so when he gets back i hope we can get that all taken care of and then we'll move right along to the foam okay let me get this started i can't see you. down a little down yeah right there sir okay. wow that one stayed perfectly that still looks really good Depth is the same on both walls. Front and back? Yeah. Yeah. The depth. 16, once again. So if we go 16 here. Okay. And then I go, what is it, 32? You get three pieces out of this? That's what I'm saying, yeah. No way. Yeah. You want to do your side? I like that. I get away. Where are you going to go? <laughs> was he talking about a vacation? No, I know what he was talking about. What was he talking about? American woman? Yeah, I don't get Let's it. talking about a woman. She's got to go? He's got to go. He's got to get away. I can relate to him <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> wow. But then how do you finish your cut? You're going to mend you. Do you come off the edge? It's peeling off now, but... I thought I had polarized glasses on for a second. I just have clear ones on. I, mean, I couldn't tell if it was shaded, if that was the real thing. Or... And when we towed it in, we want it sitting... Uh... I got some drywall screws that we're going to put in here and into them. And then we'll take those out when we take these off because these are going to stay at the concrete and then to secure these to the concrete, we're going to put some screws like halfway in and have them sticking out. Like, yeah. Oh, you got it. I'm excited about this. And what we can do is... Is it easier for me to help cut with you, cut? What are you going to say? We can start laying them out like on the outside maybe. Okay. And then we'll know how many we need. A little wavy, but... Maybe. No, I'm okay, not. We are finally moving on to foam board insulation. Yes, it is early in the process, but we are starting with our insulation before we do our concrete. So we're going to have foam board insulation on the outer edge, like this, of the slab. And then we're also going to have some on the bottom the whole entire floor will be insulation so we're starting with these edges here these are 16 inch pieces they're two inches thick and this is eps foam board insulation it's meant for under slab and this is the 25 psi i believe there's kind of a controversy on eps versus xps for underground or under slab insulation and it looked to me in my research like this stuff is going to hold the r value a lot longer so this is what we went with well, i think we have enough cut to go around the perimeter the catch is it's just not going to fit in there right now so this needs to sit all the way down right on top of where the uh the form is so more shoveling more raking let's see if we can get this in Let's 
Because now we got a backfill. Thankfully, our ground. You know? I'm so jazzed about it. Did you realize that? Oh no! Could we put a piece of tape on that? I knew you were doing this. So it's deep enough, hon. It's just a. Uh... Looking for you. Right. I know I am. You'll never know. Oh, You'll never know what I know. Get that little rock out of there. He's making me mad. See him? <laughs> don't even joke about that. Uh. Oh. Yes. That was a marathon right there. That was hard. Look at that. Okay, so now we know that that's 16 inches. The footers need to be. Our foam board is done. We are moving on to backfilling. We are going to add dirt on the outside of the form so it goes in this little gap we have in some areas. And then we're gonna kind of level things off out there. And then we are also going to add just a hair inside. Our measurements, it's a, it's a tad deep. So we were looking for 18 inches depth on both or all four corners and walls. And then we were looking for 12 inches width on the end walls and then 20, 20 inches on this one right here. But we actually, we're perfect on this side. We're a little bit big on this side and that's just the case because of the bucket. We're gonna be adding in a little bit of gravel right to the base of the foam board and we should get much closer to the 16, 18 inch mark. We don't wanna be much over that because concrete is expensive. So that's what we're gonna work on next. Well, it doesn't look like much, but believe it or not, this is gonna be the start of our floor drain. So this is pretty much done. I'll probably hit it with some black paint before we go mount it over there. And then we also built something that we're gonna be using a little bit later. And this is, this is almost done. We gotta find somewhere to mount it, but this is gonna be a rebar bender. I have number three rebar in there right now. And I've got a little gap on that one that does the number three rebar. And then we got this one on there for doing bigger rebar. And we'll be able to bend our rebar hopefully something like that hopefully this works but let's get started on the drain and we're going to build a little frame for it and see if we can get that thing mounted i'm gonna drill holes so the concrete will be underneath concrete's gonna go right to there Well, I think we got this drain under control now. We built this frame out of two by six, which 
didn't work at all. It was too small of a diameter for our drain, the opening of it, and it's also a little too tall. So we're scrapping that one. We built one out of two by four that's 16 inches across. So it fits over our drain. We've got our drain on top. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure we have this drain in the correct position in the concrete floor. So what we're gonna do is we want a slight slope in our concrete that like will kind of lead water into our drain. So we're gonna do this a half inch lower than everything else. And a tool we've been using on this project is this laser. I don't know exactly what this thing's called, but it's absolutely amazing. It was expensive and I was debating getting it and I'm glad I did. We've used it for grading the land. We've used it for our forms. Now we're using it for the drain. It's coming in extremely handy. So I set this at a half inch lower than the rest of the grade. So what we'll do is we'll come by here and the laser is gonna hit this and it's gonna tell me exactly where we need to have this drain. It's a good inch and a half we could start with. Put stakes in here and we're gonna pull it up on the stake and screw it into the stake right where we need it. Oh. Just barely. Well, we're getting ready to put down some plastic vapor barrier. What I'm doing is I'm going around and if there's any rocks that are just like sticking way up, we're gonna get rid of those ones. We didn't have any of this gravel brought in, so it's not like crushed gravel. It's just gravel from the property here. So it's not exactly uh, very small. We spent a lot of time over the past couple days um, backfilling in where we put up the foam around the edge. Let me show you kind of what was going on. I think it was this panel right here. So the foam is very hard to secure to anything. So if you put a screw in it like that, the screw is basically just gonna go in it and the screw head will rip right through it. Originally, I had some screws on the back end and I just kind of screwed it into the foam a little bit to kind of hold it there. And what happened was we were backfilling this section here and we didn't really have anything holding the front down of the foam. So as we started to put weight on the back of the foam, this piece kind of like pushed off. So we came up with a new game plan and that was to screw it from this side we put, I think, three or four screws in each piece and the little head on the screw gave us a little more bite. It's holding it on there a little better. And then we came through the footer and we added some big rocks and some gravel along the bottom to hold it in. And then we slowly backfilled the whole thing in. It took like all day. But we have these things all backfilled. We have them secured. And the reason we want it backfilled is we only have a six inch wooden form. This foam board right here is actually gonna act as our form when the concrete comes and the concrete's heavy. So we need to have a back uh, to kind of hold it in place for us. So that's all done, that's secure. Let's get the rest of these rocks out of here and uh, we'll start rolling out the poly. So the poly we're using today is going to be clear 10 mil poly. So it is 10 millimeters thick. Um, you can go thinner, but I was personally a little bit concerned about maybe like tearing a hole because of our rocks. And then also we're adding a lot of elements into the concrete. And I didn't know with kind of stepping on it if that was gonna happen. So we went with the 10 mil, I'm happy. It was a little bit more pricey. And from the research I've done, there is two ways that you can go about doing this. And some people are really adamant about doing it this way and some people you know vice versa they really believe in doing it the other way and so what I'm referring to is whether you would put your poly down first and then your foam board and then continue to add your elements or you would do the exact opposite where you put your foam board down first and then you put the poly over the board and I think we kind of all know the theory behind the vapor barrier or the poly it is to prevent moisture from diffusing through a surface and getting into the other space or area so it's protecting it from water so to speak now the foam board does actually act as a vapor barrier itself so it can be in direct contact with soil so there's really no problem with that either in our opinion there's a few pros for putting the foam board on top of the poly not only can you see it better so you can you know, get the seams correctly and just make sure nothing happens to it. I feel like it's also gonna protect it even better from the water. Our ground here is not very wet. It drains really well, but there is moisture in it, of course. And in fact, our crawl space, you can tell of our house, there's no sort of barrier. There is quite a bit of moisture in the crawl space. And so the reason you would do it that way is you are keeping your foam above the moisture. So you got that vapor barrier or the poly down below, and then you've got all the other elements above it 
and the condensation will stop right at that poly because the ground is what's cold here and then we're going to be heating the shop and because we're going to be heating the shop in the winter we want to make sure it stays warm in there or, you know that's the reason why we are doing this foam board and when you're putting your foam board you want to make sure that it lasts for a really long time because it does break down over time i think it would I think it would take many, many years, but so you want to protect it. Ideally, you wouldn't have it super saturated or sitting in water. So I guess the drawback to doing it that way is that when we pour the concrete, there is water in that process and your foam board can get some water in it. And technically it wouldn't really have anywhere to escape because you now have trapped it above the poly. So if you're starting to degrade the foam board, it's not gonna be as effective for you for being efficient for insulating. So that's the theory behind that one. Also, some folks say that the foam board can float if you put it above your poly. I haven't heard that to be an actual issue, but you could probably see it's pretty confusing both ways. I mean, I can understand both arguments. We are definitely gonna stick with what we originally want to do, which is put poly down first. We're not sure if we're gonna put it all the way throughout the footers. So we may just drop it off right when we get down to the base of it, we may extend it the whole way. And then we are going to put all of our foam board. Really for Eric and I, this is, you know, it's a cold winter and we're gonna be heating the shop. So that's kind of what we're thinking. And ultimately I feel like the foam board will work the best for us in our situation if it is above the plastic. So we're gonna start laying down our plastic. So, Another clear tape? Yeah. I don't know where it is. I never saw the roll. Vapor barrier is officially down. And what we're doing is we are taping the seams, make sure it's sealed up. And then we also had a half a tube of acoustical sealant left over from when we did the chicken coop. And we put that down right here to kind of use it up. But we're gonna get this last little section taped off and it's time for foam board. No, it doesn't matter. It's just more oh like the cutting. Foam board's going down. It's not heavy. It's just a little bit bulky. We're going to be taping not completely all the seams, but just a little bit to make sure it doesn't like fly up with the wind or anything like that. We've got some Gorilla tape. Maybe in an ideal world you would tape all the seams, but I don't think we're that worried about it. Oh, this is like really weird tape. This is more like tar. It's really weird, yeah. Down the chute. Things are going good. We're about halfway done with the foam. I'm gonna say that up until now, this is probably the easiest part of the project. It's it's super nice. You just lay them down next to each other. You put a little bit of tape on them. We don't have much cutting to do. We're gonna cut out the drain. We're gonna cut out the plumbing that we put in over there, but that's like on the edge, that'll be super easy. And as far as which side goes up on the Reflectix, so there's the uh, like tin foil side, and then there's the, the white side. And from my research on their website, it says that if you have it facing like an airspace, you want the shiny side facing towards the warm side of the structure. And then if it's uh, not, if it's just under slab or it's uh, not touching airspace, uh, they said it doesn't matter. So we're choosing to go up with the white side. It's nice on the white side too going up because there's actual little tick marks on here where you can make measurements and you can cut it. So that makes it a little bit easier.
Eric's grabbing some more foam board. We actually have extra, which is awesome. We don't usually have extra supplies. And this thing is super reflective, but I wanted to show you the condensation that's forming. It's been really hot today, and there's already um, condensation underneath the plastic. Well, it's safe to say we definitely bought enough insulation. I might even have some to return, and we're using EPS insulation. This is Artec. We're using uh, 25 PSI, and this is uh, specific, so it's roof walls foundation and under slab and under slab is an important one you want to make sure if it's going under slab it's ready to go under the slab thank goodness it's not windy today gosh you're kind of bulky yeah, awkward it's gonna take three Three and a half more or something like that. Well, it's pretty unbelievable, but we actually <laughs> finished the foam board. We, we, I mean, it looks, it looks complete out here now. Yeah, and I'm pretty amazed too at how far we've gotten on this. I think, how many, how long have we been working on this? Four or it's five been like days? like four or five days. Long days, and there, we have gotten a lot accomplished. We've learned a lot. We've messed up like multiple times and had to redo some stuff. We like to learn as we go. So <laughs> when we first were looking at the blueprint of this Quonset hut, probably a week and a half, maybe even two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we both were pretty befuddled for about two days just trying to decipher it. Yeah. And I feel like we did really good as far as supplies. We didn't really run short on anything. Um, the footers took forever and the foam board went easier than expected. Yeah, this has been an intimidating project since the beginning. We're doing good. Like Ariel said, we got the foam board down. That part went really well. We do have kind of like a high spot we're standing on right now. I took my laser level to see kind of where we were at and how thick the slab was gonna be. For some reason, just like right here where we're standing, it's, a high spot. it's like a high spot. So we'd only have like a three inch slab right there, which is good because it's not like that's in the center. So we're gonna lift up the plastic and the foam right here, excavate a little bit of dirt out of there. And I think we should be all right. Our math was so spot on that uh, we just didn't account for some of the bigger rocks that are sitting underneath this foam board. It's really rigid and stiff. And so there's no give and you measured all the way around and we're we're closer to like what a five, five, to, five, five to six, to six inches of a maybe slab. seven inches in some spots i think that's one thing that would have made this a lot easier is if we actually had gravel delivered and we had like fine gravel that you could put over the top and really smooth down we're just working with gravel that we have on the property so it's a little bumpy and we can't complain to have this much gravel of our own on the property is yeah. fantastic we're not quite done tonight we're gonna try to get wire mesh done we're getting the wire mesh done so we opted to do wire mesh on the main part of the slab and we're going to do different kinds of rebar in the footer but the wire mesh it's pretty cool it's almost like wire fencing so it has six inch squares in it and they're big sheets i think they're like seven foot four inches by 20 feet so we got a bunch of sheets of those we're going to drag over here and we're going to lay them basically where the six inch slab part's going to go we're hoping to finish that off tonight and then next time we see you we will most likely be working on the rebar in the footers and finishing off some of the other elements of the yeah <laughs> we got the we got the in floor heat we got other things we got some piping we got to do we have yes. a lot of work left so let's get at it wish us luck it's getting late <laughs> simple living goes rogue